Hey all, thank you for joining me. I'm Neil, and today we're gonna to look at polyatomic ions, things like nitrate and hydronium, but specifically the memorization of these names and formulas. If you're taking a general chemistry class, this is definitely not one of the highlights. Getting a list like this and being told you have to know dozens of names and formulas in just a couple weeks time. In today's video, we're gonna to try to make it easier for you using a mnemonic device based on Nick, the baby camel. It's a fun way to help commit some of these complicated formulas to memory, and I think it's really gonna assist you in your chemistry learning. Thanks so much for joining, and if you have a moment and would be willing to like the video and subscribe to the channel, I would deeply appreciate it. Let's get started. So the method we're gonna be using to remember some of these polyatomic ions is what's called a mnemonic device, and it all starts with our memorization of this ridiculous sentence, Nick, the baby camel, ate an inch clam and crepes for supper in Phoenix. Now we're gonna use all these purple words here to represent particular polyatomic ions. You can see that the word eight, A-T-E, is highlighted in green, and that's because this is gonna work exclusively for eight of the major polyatomic ions, and they all happen to end in that suffix, A-T-E. So the ions we're gonna be using this for are nitrate, bromate, carbonate, iodate, chlorate, chromate, sulfate, and phosphate. Now surely your teacher wants you to memorize more than just those eight, but this will at least give you a head start. And then you may do the other polyatomic ions that we can't use this tool for by a more traditional method like flashcards or something. Okay, let's see how we use this sentence. The first thing we're gonna be doing is looking at some rules. And rule number one says that the first letter of each of the major words in the sentence represents the first element of that particular ion. So when I say major words, I mean words like Nick and baby and supper, not words like for and and, stuff like that. Now you'll see that there's a purple arrow pointing to the first letter in each word. So for example, the N in Nick represents the nitrogen in nitrate, and the B in baby represents the bromine in bromate. Now to be clear, the letter B really on the periodic table represents boron, so we have to remember that this isn't a perfect mnemonic device. I'll also draw your attention to clam and crepes. Now in clam, the CL, the first and second letter, represent the chlorine and chlorate, and in crepes, the C and the R help us remember the chromium in chromate. Okay, so now we know what the first letter of each of these words is going to help us figure out. Now let's go to rule number two. Rule number two says the number of consonants in each of those major words equals the number of oxygens. So it turns out that these eight polyatomic ions all have a certain number of oxygen atoms following that first element. Is it one, two, three? Well, the number of consonants tells you. So for example, in the word Nick, there's three consonants, N, C, and K, and therefore there's three oxygen atoms in nitrate. In the word supper, we have four consonants, so that tells us that there's gonna be four oxygens in our sulfate formula. Okay, so we've got the first letter down, we've got the number of oxygens down, all that remains is remembering the charge. So for that, we're gonna to go to rule number three. The number of vowels in each major word equals the size of the negative charge. So like I said, these are all negatively charged polyatomic ions. So we're just gonna count the vowels, like there's one vowel in baby, A, so we know the charge is one minus. There's two vowels in crepes, two E's, so therefore the charge is two minus. Pretty easy, right? Okay, so those are the only rules you have to remember, and if you use all of them collectively, you can remember these eight ions. I have one more tip for you. You've probably noticed that on your list of ions you need to remember, there are some that seem to have like two different options. So for example, you have nitrite, but you also have nitrate. So what's the difference between the two? Well, it turns out that the suffix I-T-E always means one less oxygen than the suffix A-T-E. So for example, nitrite has two oxygens, but nitrate has three. And this pertains to things like sulfate and sulfite as well. So what I always remember is that the eight version of the ion, well, it ate an extra oxygen, right? It's consumed an extra oxygen atom, and therefore it's always going to have one more than the eight version, which is a little bit lighter. 
Okay, well, I really hope that this mnemonic device makes the not so fun process of memorizing things in chemistry a little bit easier. And I got to tell you, your teacher has probably told you how important it is to know your polyatomic ions. They're not lying. These things pop up in so many different contexts and so many different units throughout uh, a year long chemistry class. So do yourself a favor, get them out of the way. I know it's not fun, but memorize them and it's going to make so many other things much more accessible. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video and Hey, if you have tips for me on how to make these videos more useful to you, please let me know in the comments. I'm pretty new at this YouTube thing and I could use some help in any case, like, and subscribe if this worked for you. And thanks so much for watching.